Here we go, Chevron. Ah, Shalom, perfect timing. We're learning how to start a religion. Part two. Well, let's start by talking about a horrible way to start a religion. So, we said, if I came and I showed up today, and I told you guys, you know, Abe, I had this dream last night. God came to me and told me to save the world. I'm the Messiah. Do you believe me? You don't have to. No. <coughs> Why don't you believe me? Why would I? It's just well, thing. maybe you, the first thing you would say is you probably have Jerusalem Syndrome. <laughs> How many Mashiachs did you guys meet walking into the, the old city today? A, a good five or six, right, Sam? They're all over the place. There's someone. He's like, are you, are you, are you, are you, now I know what that condition was. So why don't you believe me? What if I'm ca super charismatic? I really lay it on. Maybe. If you're or, on. or maybe I say, guys, we're going to do this thing, or just like play, like... Maybe. Especially if you give us positions of power, and this your religion. That's right, that. positions of power, spaghetti and meatballs, and it just builds like that. Hard, very difficult, but you could probably, you could see how there would be a natural explanation that it could get pulled off. Even though it would take time and... What if I come and I said, guys, you all had a dream last night that I'm the Mashiach. But what if I didn't have a dream? Oh! <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. You had a dream. Okay, you convinced me. Wow, my goodness, the world is very uh, feeble-minded nowadays. <laughs> that was with all of my love. I'm just bringing out the point. So, uh, you believe me? Why not? You can't tell me what I, I dreamt about last night, and I didn't dream that. Not only that, here's a book. Usually there's a lot of books around. You know, we're in a yeshiva after all. Okay, oh, yes, that's a good one. Let's go, let's go with the Talmud Bavli. That's good. And in this book, imagine this is called the Bible, it says that you had a dream that I'm the Messiah. Take it. It's yours. It's yours. And, and now tell your children that. And everyone take this. Hey, can I read the book and see what it actually says it? Yeah, sure. It says it in there. It says it in there. Who wrote the book? God. Okay, but how? And, and you saw God. And it says it right there. That's like, by God? Like, yeah, by God. God. The, the Bible. By God. That's, you, you, that's one of those ones that people like to have, like knockoff books. You know, you write the same title as somebody else. But there's one that you can't ever publish a book and just call it Torah. You know, or the Bible. Uh, which one exactly? So, why don't you believe me? Sam, do you believe me? You had a dream last night? Well, first of all, the Mashiach is a mamish tzaddik. Anas, the Mashiach is an extremely righteous human being. I'm trying my best. So that's the first reason that it's for sure not true. Because you're trying. I'm just trying. <laughs> They say, trying like the rest of us, to be a good youth. But besides that, why else do you not believe me? Sam, why don't you believe me? Maybe you do. You had a dream last night. Everybody, I'm just, now I'm talking to you. Uh, no, because a dream's a dream, it's not reality. It's a thought. Let's say it better. God came to you without a shadow of a doubt that it was God, and said, I'm the Messiah. You believe me? Then yes. You believe me? Well, you actually had God come speak to you? Well, like... Like last night. God last, like last night, God came to you. I don't know, wait, you're about last night? Yeah. Last I don't know, hypothetically. No, no, hypothetically, I'm, I'm convincing I you now. Last night, no, last night, I 
I think last night, oh yeah, we talked about last night. No, last night, God came to you. The other, the opposite of getting passed out, getting high. God came to you and said, I'm the Messiah. You did not have it? You don't believe me? And by the way, and here's a book that says that that's what happened. And take the book. Do you accept the book? The book that says that I'm the Messiah. No. What do you do with the book? Read it. Read it? Yeah. I show you the passage that says, you saw God come to you last night. Okay. And, they, and, and I tell you, take this book on as, as truth. Yeah. Do you accept it? No. Probably burn it. I throw it away. I'm having a very hard time convincing a, you know, a group of individuals that something that didn't happen to them actually happened. So my question to you, my friends. There's a book called the Torah. You know what it says in it? If you don't, I'm happy you came to Eishat Torah. And even if you do, let me just point out a major uh, highlight, if you will. It says there that God came to the entire nation of Israel at Mount Sinai, and we all experienced God. And God spoke to us, gave us the Ten Commandments, gave us all the mitzvahs, and Moshe's the prophet, etc. And we accepted this book. You know which book? The same one that we're telling over to our children, 3,000 334 years later. If this didn't happen, how would you have started the lie? That was shaken, the saw burning book, and then told the Egyptian. So I'm trying to start a lie right now that, that God came to all of you, and no one's buying it. Like, I actually was asking you, did God, like, did, no, I, I was telling you, God came to you. And you're like, no, he didn't. You can't convince me of something that didn't happen. What if it was a group of people who all agreed within themselves that we, we saw God so, and then went out? And very good. So, conspiracy theory. Of course. That's a real one. That we all got together and we made up this fabrication. Like, Three Moses, people. you're going to be like the Moses one. Okay, you'll be the Mo. You'll be him. And then, then Aaron, we'll, you'll be an Aaron. Yeah, yeah, okay, he'll be into power. it. I'm sure there was some infight. No, I want to be Moses. No, I want to be, I want to be the first. But let's say they kind of made peace within themselves. They created, like, you know, shared equity within the organization. And now they're going to go forth and do this. There's only one problem. How did we all get that book that has a, an account of millions of people being there? Meaning, we'll all tell our kids, and we'll tell our kids that where were the millions of people? If we're just a small group, so you want to suggest there was millions of people? It was a millions of people conspiracy? Okay, a, a little bit, a little bit, maybe I'd say far-fetched. Even if you want to go with that. Millions of people made it up. There's only one thing. In the book itself, it says that no one else is going to attempt this claim of a national revelation. Let me ask you, what is stronger to make up a religion that one person had a vision? What's a stronger you know, claim to pull off as to the authenticity? That one person had a vision and then came and convinced other people of it? Or that an entire nation experienced something? What's a stronger claim as to the validity of it? The one that you have more alibis, let's say. People, more people can vouch for you. Yeah, more people can vouch. Meaning, if you can get an entire nation to come with one voice and say, we all experienced God, that's very strong. The only thing is the Torah says that no one else is going to do this. So my question to you is, if it was fabricated, let's say there's three million people, this mega conspiracy, and they made the whole thing up. Why don't we find, and wow, what a great 
the greatest lie ever pulled off. Why don't we have any other group of people trying to pull off this lie? Because if you could pull off such a mega lie, that's a great way to get your religion going. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you could pull off such a lie, wow. You're, you got solid basis for your religion. But there's only one problem. We don't find any other nation, religion, trying to pull this off or claiming a national revelation. You know why? Because you can't fabricate it. It's too mega. It's too strong. How would you pull off such a line? That's always going to be the question. And if you claim that it was some natural thing, so everyone always asks, you know what? They had acacia wood, Rabbi. You know, the desert is known for its psilocybin. It was a mega mushroom trip. It was DMT. Forget about it. They were, read the book. They were seeing the sounds, Rabbi. You ever gone to a Pink Floyd concert? On weed? Or a lot more than that? So, yeah, they were all feeling good. And that massive millions of people psychedelic trip, they all wrote down and they all like, were like dosed. Like, this is what happened. Yeah, this is what happened. Yeah, this is what happened. And then, where are the recipients? Through all time. What do you suggest to that? How likely is it that three million people have the same trip? That, that's my first answer to it, is get two people in a room on mushrooms, and they're not having the same experience, let alone millions of people. But secondly, and I think this is a stronger point, if it could be pulled off naturally, why wouldn't somebody come along? I'm not suggesting that people should do this. I think this is a horrible thing to do. But why wouldn't somebody come along, pack 600,000, mil 3 million men, women, and children into a giant field in the desert, get them dehydrated, give them psilocybin mushrooms? You know what I'm saying? Low protein, right? High carbohydrate diet. Dehydrated, we mentioned that already. And then hit them with the DMT and just let it play out and a new religion will form through that. Please don't do that. I beg humanity, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not kidding. Do not do that. You'll be criminally charged. But the question is, if it was fabricated, why couldn't it be replicated? I repeat, if it was a fabricated mushroom trip, why couldn't it be replicated? And why hasn't nobody else tried to? If you want to start a religion, that's a bang on way to do it. Meaning your claim will be so much stronger if you could pull off such a lie. Unless you actually say, it wasn't a lie. It actually happened. Which is much more rational and logical. So the person that says to me, but you never know. Maybe this is the one time ever. And Moses, you know, he hung out in Egypt and there was a lot of sorcery there. And he did one of those like, you know, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain thing and like the booming voice. And then there was aliens, you know, alien technology. Rabbi, I, like I saw YouTube videos about aliens, and I think that's what happened by Harsina. And any other explanation you want to give? So the simple response is, why was it never replicated? It's a great way to pull off a religion. If you could make up such a massive lie, why didn't anybody else try to do it? It would give so much more validity to the religion. So you say, yeah, but you know what? It's the one time ever that it happened. I say, that sounds like you're being the illogical one. It sounds much more rational to say that it actually happened. And you're going with the, you know what? You never know. So I always say to that person, 
we go back to the same analogy. Has a, have you ever crossed a bridge in your life before? Yes. You walked across the bridge? Yes. Do, you, do you know that bridges have collapsed in the history of bridge building in this world? They actually have a deadline. Every single bridge will, uh, will collapse. They so can you're, you're, stre you're strengthening the question, but you still cross the bridge. Yeah. Why? You, nev you never know. You Better ne question. Why do I drive a car? That would have been the follow-up, yes. You'll say, I don't. Okay, fine. Anybody here drive? I drive. Anybody else drive? Okay, all hands are up. I, yeah, driving. Uh, you could take a position of not, but I, 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 I drive. Especially in Israel. In Israel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could drive here, you could drive anywhere. So, if you drive here, you know God's will. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know God's will, that's it. I think the Egged buses get, you know, because they drove the tanks and the, you know. So, why do we get into cars? God forbid, Hashem Yirachim, there's a lot of car crashes, we should all be safe. The answer is, is because the statistics are that it's going to be good, it's going to be okay. Why do we ever get into planes? Planes have crashed. Hashem Yirachim, Lo There's that 0, 0.0, you never know. You never know. So the answer to that person is... But that's the same thing as, what do you eat? You could choke. Yeah. Well, you might say, fine. You might say there's a necessity. I need to eat. Or a person's going to die. A person, there's certain rules. But you never know. So either I die not eating, or I take the 99.99% .99 chance that I'm not going to die and stay alive and eat. So basically you're choosing to live your life or not. So that's the answer we tell the person, is that... Every single thing in life, you use your <coughs> rational brain and make decisions even though it's not 100%. So why all of a sudden when it comes to the biggest decisions in life, the decision of is there a world beyond this world and do my actions actually matter and is there a rubric and a guiding principle and a God that cares about me and loves me and wants a relationship with me? And that demands certain things of my actions. All of a sudden, when it comes to that very answer, I'm oh, uh, uh, airplanes, I don't go anywhere. Bridges, I'll, you never know, you know. Why are you so flippy floppy and you become the most illogical person? It's so amazing sometimes the biggest academic mind that claim to be such logical human beings when it comes to their, their financial assessments, the, the decision what kind of car to buy, what kind of stroller to buy. Will be, will be hours, days, weeks of analysis of going through the, the, the data, the stats, and make a decision based on the evidence. And all of a sudden, when it comes to this area, which is bigger than everything, ah, oh, yeah. usually it's not like that, ah, and then and like in the middle, ah, like, back on the thing. I can usually tell when, when exactly when somebody's being required to be intellectually honest and intellectually integrated because, and, and they feel like, oh, this actually might affect my decision making. Oh, oh, and then they start, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Were you, were you burping? Were you, were you making some noise, like a, like a caveman noise? Coming out of, uh, that was intelligible, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Why, when it comes to these decisions, all of a sudden our mind just leaves? So how do you make up a religion? How do you start a religion? The answer is, if you could pull off this lie, wow. Wow. How would you do that? Virtually impossible. Because no one's believing something that didn't happen to them. And I'm telling you that it happened to you. And, to, and I'm giving you the book that says that it happened to you. And no one said it didn't at the time. Yeah, and, and we're still saying the story. The, how is the lie happening now? Unless you say it's actually not a lie. And if you say that someone, well, you know what? Well, it was the one time, so why didn't anybody else replicate it? If it can be done through natural means, the man behind the curtain, psychedelic, you know, dosing in the, in the, in the midbar, <coughs> why was it not replicated? Because if you could, you've got to bang on source for your religion. 
The answer is you can't because it didn't happen. Well, the Jews did it first. And so what? Yeah, no, say well, it out. So we can't do it again. Why not? It's not believable if you do it a second time. Well, how? How did we pull it off? If it's a lie, how did we pull it off? That's one. And even if you say, you never know. You never know. So why didn't anybody else do it? So even if you say, this is what I'm going with. You, you never know. It's that, it's the craziest chance that, that that was the one alien thing and it was the one Moshe behind the curve, the whole thing was fabricated. That was the one psychedelic trip ever. So I tell you, you're living your life on the 0.001%. Are you being, using your mind, being rational? Why do you use your mind? Everything else rational. And then here, all of a sudden, like, you, you're completely intelligible and irrational with that decision. When you go to get a surgery, you pick the one who has the credentials, who went to the best schools, who's done 10,000 surgeries before. You use your brain and make a logical sequence of steps and decisions. This is bigger than everything. This is the ultimate questions. All of this, my friends, is included in the rubric of Amuna. That Hashem's Torah is real and was given to us at Har Sinai in the national revelation. We're continuing the mitzvah of Amuna day by day now, building this up deeper and deeper. We're going to be speaking next time about deeper concepts in Amuna, just how far this goes. Everyone should have a wonderful day. And we should be Zoycha Mamish. The Mashiach said, Kain bim hevri amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day. All too. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.